Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I am an endocrinologist and today I am going to talk to you about alcohol and diabetes. Let's get started. All right, before we get started guys, please subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to share. Can you really drink alcohol? If you have diabetes, I'm going to tell you how to do this right. If you have a habit or if you have a social habit, and it's okay sometimes. And how it is okay, we'll just get on it right now. So I'll tell you a couple quick guidelines, guys. And if you listen to this, you will never get into trouble. Okay. Now, if you want to drink alcohol, this is how you do it. You have diabetes and you want to have a couple drinks with your friends. Just limit it to two drinks total okay if you are really having fun i'll give you one more okay <laughs> so and always have that drink with a meal and try to avoid this high carb or carby cocktails why is that i mean think about this you have diabetes and if they are putting a bunch of orange juice and a little bit of, uh, uh vodka in it you, you're gonna have problems right so vodka is not going to really do anything too much if you're just having a two drinks but the orange juice can spike your blood sugar immediately now on the other hand um if you're having a relatively let's say you're having a, a diet sprite uh, with some vodka you know let's say you do that diet diet, diet uh, sprite and uh, some vodka here that will be fine because actually studies show that a moderate drinking, like a two drinks with your meal, can actually reduce your fasting blood sugars and can actually reduce your insulin levels and insulin resistance. Hmm, isn't that surprising? It's all about how much you are drinking and how you're drinking it. So if you are not having a lot of sugar when you drink alcohol and you're limiting your alcohol to two drinks and maximum three drinks, especially for women, I, would, I wouldn't exceed two because they're less tolerant to alcohol. But men generally can have one or two more drinks, uh, but two to three is pretty much max, okay? Uh, now, why is that? Now, the, 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 the alcohol can actually help the insulin resistance at a low level, but when you increase the alcohol consumption, and we call this acute alcohol consumption, and if you go crazy and drink like 10 to 16 drinks in one night, what you're doing there is basically you are paralyzing your liver. Your liver is very toxic, your alcohol is very toxic to your liver. So what happens is, and if you didn't really eat well um, and you kept drinking, what's gonna happen is the next morning, normal people like use their liver to keep having some glucose in their system because the, the the glucose that comes with the food pretty much disappears within three to four hours and then after that you are relying on your liver to give you some glucose from the storage right but if you are locking the door of that storage then even if your blood sugar is going down there will be no sugar coming out of your liver because of this acute toxicity and this becomes a real problem if you're if you're just on a uh, you know a diabetic pill or something that may not be a big problem but if you're on a sulfonylurea such as glipizide glyburide glimepiride that increases your insulin levels or if you're on just purely on insulin like a long acting insulin so what the, what does the insulin do remember when, when you take insulin or any medication that chronically increases your insulin level like sulfonylurea drugs they increase your insulin level and that insulin level will basically reduce the sugar coming out of your liver okay so your liver will not release that sugar when you have too much insulin in your body and then you drink excessive alcohol and you shut down your liver even more then there will be really nothing coming out of your liver and after three four hours there is no sugar from the food either then what are you left with then you may have a, like a severe low blood sugar and it may be difficult to recover. Now, we're talking about type 2 diabetes here, but type 2, uh, type 1 diabetes, actually, patients with type 1 diabetes are at greater risk. Why? Because they don't even have a hormone called glucagon 
especially if they have been diabetic for a while, which is the hormone that tells your liver to make sugar, to make glucose. So think about this. And then if you're type 1 diabetic, you're on insulin, you know that, you have to be. And uh, you're on insulin, and insulin reduces the sugar that comes from your liver, and alcohol stops your liver from making sugar, plus you don't even have a messenger. You don't even have a hormone to tell your liver to make sugar, that you're basically negative. You can go in a hyperglycemic coma, low blood sugar coma, if you drink a lot. Now again, the drinking one to two uh, alcoholic drink is not necessarily going to put you in coma, okay? That's okay, as I said, even for type one diabetics, if you are drinking one or two drinks, and type one diabetics are a little bit different. So every type one diabetic is a little bit different. Some type one diabetics are more insulin resistant than the others. Uh, so the more insulin resistant you are, the, the luckier you are when it comes to low blood sugar potential. Uh, but if you're a brutal diabetic, if you tend to go low uh, very easily, then I would be very careful, even if I had only two drinks, I would be constantly watching my blood sugars to make sure. Now the problem is, with the alcohol, if you're going to a bar, if you're going to a place and you start drinking, yeah, you start with one, you'll go there to say, oh, I'll just have one. And the next thing you know, you'll go for two, then a three, then a four, then you open your eyes and you are. So that's not, if you don't think that you have a really good willpower, and if you have type one diabetes, I would not step into a bar. If you're in a restaurant, you ask for a glass of wine, fine, you'll be okay. A glass of wine is not really gonna drop your blood sugar. Another thing that you have to, before we close, another thing you have to be monitoring is uh, alcoholic um, ketoacidosis. So alcohol, when, when it shuts down your liver, your body starts turning the wheel for, uh, for, for the fatty acids and ketosis can develop. That can happen for both type 1 and type 2. Typically happens with the excessive alcohol consumption. So, and it can definitely put you in the hospital. And if you're on metformin, um, definitely that is something you have to uh, pay attention because metformin um, does not necessarily increase your risk of uh, going into metabolic uh, acidosis or ketoacidosis unless you have risk factors, but if you combine, you know, metformin and excessive alcohol drinking, uh, you are basically multiplying risk factors, which may not be the best idea. The bottom line for pretty much everybody, avoid excessive drinking. One to two drinks if you want to drink is the way to go. See you in the next video.